YouTube family, what's going on with y'all, man? My name is Kieran Davis, owner, founder of Contagious Co., where our focus is on making self-love contagious. Guys, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how I started my clothing brand, like the journey. Um, I know I was talking about more in-depth the journey like in the other video, but this video, I'm going to talk about just the process of coming up with the name, coming up with the, all this stuff, right? Got some coffee right now because I've been up since 4 a.m., 7 p.m. here Eastern, and um, it's been a long day, man. I got a little bit of time. I got to go meet uh, one of my uh, students. And then I got to jump into an inner circle meeting here in about an hour and 30 minutes. So I got to get this coffee in me so I can, you know, keep my mind focused, keep my energy up for the remainder of the day, right? So as I mentioned previously, <clears throat> you know, I was born in Pennsylvania. Uh, you know, and we didn't, we really lived in the projects for, for, you know what I mean? Like them sort of like um, projects where, you know, kind of like single parent, single moms get in uh, for like assistant living because like you get like a reduced, um, you know, reduced rent. Then my mom started hustling, grinding, da, 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 da. So they start charging her more rent. So we moved over to another different project, right? A little bit more better, two, two story. Uh, you know, it came in Washington. I mean, I had Washington dryer hookup type shit. You feel me? So start moving up a little bit. And, um, you know, uh, my mom, her now husband at the time, then her boyfriend, you know, uh, his family moved to Alabama. So we decided to move to Alabama. Alabama was a very, very <laughs> night and day from Pennsylvania. As you can tell, Pennsylvania, Alabama is completely like opposite. I learned so much uh, about myself in Alabama and just life. That's why I really went to middle school, high school, things like that. So shout out to Huntsville, Alabama uh, for a big part of uh, making me who I am today. But during that process down there, you know, we experienced a lot of like, you know, hardship, homelessness, and just a lot of struggles, you know what I mean? Um, but this really built character for me, you know? I already was going through a lot of stuff, just like, you know, as anybody becoming of age, just figuring out who you are, uh, you, you know, and finding your place in the world. But I always had this sort of like um, liking towards like psychology, you know, and that on top of like the things my family was going through and faced with and trying to comfort my mom. It's kind of a weird dynamic, but a lot of the times my mom would like ask me for advice uh, because she always knows very like not so much like smart, but was like wise, you know, and I'm not that don't mean I'm always make the right decisions. I don't, you know. Um, but when it comes to a lot of like, I'm, you know, just I got my own type of wisdom. Right. <clears throat> and um, a lot of people that know me know that just from knowing things I've never even learned before. I just know it because I just know it, you know. So. Um, experience a lot of these things, like experiencing like domestic violence growing up and homelessness and just the effects mental health can have on people and uh, the 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 lack of hope people will have and the lack of joy people will have and lack of self-love people will have I always wanted to you know create something that could you know impact the people who are struggling with that you know the people who are losing meaning in life and losing uh, value so fast forward uh turn night i play football in high school things like that and i always wanted to do always wanted to start a business but at the time i was really really good at writing speaking so i wanted to rap and I actually can rap really, really well, you know. And um, I was playing football in high school. It was a varsity standout all four years. Started varsity for my freshman year. Um, took a lot of injuries, two rotator cuff injuries, shoulder dislocation. And I just, still to this day, I can't even really move my arm up, you know, um, effortlessly. <clears throat> still pain, still tight. And um, I got offered... Uh, in, in high school, I didn't really like know the importance of like GPAs. I just knew that I needed to pass the next grade. So that's what I did, you know. So when it came to graduate, I had a low ACT score, a low GPA. Man, when I tell y'all, like, look, if I can do this, anybody can. I graduated high school with a 2.4 GPA. Yeah. You know, and um, super, super bad, man. Just because my freshman year was so bad. I was so caught up, worried about girls and stuff like that. And I really wouldn't focus on uh, academics. I was just making sure I passed to the next grade and then get held back. I can keep moving forward with my peers. And um, so when I got offered a scholarship, a lot of like, I had talked to a lot of colleges, like Auburn came and see me, Tennessee, South, South Cal, 
um, a lot of different schools, you know. I mean, I'm a 6'4", strong safety type, you know, uh, run stopper, hybrid, you know what I mean? So it was like, uh, you know, it was good in zone, you know, it was developing my man coverage, things like that. So, but um, I got offered a D3 scholarship to Huntingdon in Alabama. It's like a, it's like a Christian type college, you know, coach telling me, you know, hey man, some people go to JUCO and then go, or some people, you know, like you go D3, this team is competing for a championship. You play here next season. You you know you you transfer to a, you know D one. They just you just need to go here. Let them go through their weight program, bulk up, and um get better. Right, play on the next level. And man, it was just so much shit going on. Man, just through the hardship in life, I lost love for the game of football, and um came down to I decided not to play football no more, and. Uh, this decision was high, heavily influenced on not only life, but I had started smoking weed at the time. And um, I just, boy, I became a potato. You feel me? And, um, you know, and was like, man, you know what, man? I could do other things, man. I'm smart. I'm a rap. The dumbest thing I ever did. Not saying, like, I should have went to college to play football, but instead of going to pay, it was a partial ride. I went a full scholarship, you know what I mean? Because I still have bad academics and things like that. So they couldn't really bet the house on me. But you know, um, but I still could have had somebody pay for it when they got like student aid and grants and stuff like that. Probably wouldn't have really paid much, right? And now um, I still should have went that route, but I don't regret anything because if I did, I wouldn't be here where I am right now with a better understanding of myself. So I um, started rapping and I was really good at write, writing, rapping, recording, producing, things like that. And um, me and my friends, when we had opportunity, because we're trying to get our own place, we just working jobs. Uh, we moved to Iowa. My best friend, his dad had got out of the prison. He, uh, his dad moved him up. He had got his own place. And at this time, we're 19. We're like, damn, you got your own place? Like, you feel me? It was like, a, that was like a W at the time. So we like, man, we about to move up there, do this music up there, come up. It was all over the place, all over the place. And now, look, I was there for like two weeks. And then I got hit with the freaking, uh, you know, almost with the jail, long story short. Um, we ended up first defense, you know, we basically played good to everything, da 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 I had to do two years of probation. So I was stuck in Iowa for two years on probation. And um, during this time is what really kind of changed my life because I had this, uh, I have forsaken myself, I lost myself, and I had this come to Jesus moment, right, where you begin, you think that in the beginning you're just lost and then you have this scared straight moment where it's like now you start finding yourself right you begin this hero journey and um i started like i would do little things like meditate and go on outside barefoot on walks and stuff like that and and um, reading books and going to the library and reading the bible and you know um trying to build these routines this is when i started to define personal development and i always wanted to be more but Everything around me was just a, um, a reminder of that, like, of inadequacy, right? Of, like, not ever being able to amount to more. So it's like, even though I had these things in my mind, it seemed so far-fetched. And it also seemed like, oh, if it's possible, why you, right? So I always had to fight this self-doubt, this, these limiting beliefs, this horrible self-image I had on myself. And, um, you know, so this journey really helped that. And there was books like Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Um, man, there's so many books, but that was the first book that I was like, yo, books are dope. And I um, found this quote by Maria Robinson that changed my mindset on life. And it said that nobody can go back and start a new beginning, but anybody can start today and make a new ending. And for so long in my life, I was just playing victim because that's all I seen. People play victim. Like, what was me and, and, and like as if you were born and doomed into a situation, you know, and you didn't have any control over life. You just played this character. Right. I never created this character. I just had to play this character. and I didn't know how to like win as this character. You know, some people are born into better situations where it's like they already winning. But you realize that everybody's born a winner. We're just all placed in different environments and circumstances because you have to go through this journey to develop your character for the role that you have to play in life for the impact that you can have on the world. So if I was in a different, if I grew up in a different environment, I wouldn't be who I am today. And I still battle a lot of these mindset things and a lot of this 
these programs, this programming, but that's still the process that this is what started me on that process. During this time, I had wrote down a lot of ideas that I had on businesses I could start. And of course, because I knew like if rapping don't work, <laughs> then this is what I'm going to do, right? I'm not saying that I was always like a plan B, C type of guy. It's just that I was just thinking about all my skills and all my interests and what I wanted to do. And I always wanted to start a clothing brand because I didn't have a lot of clothes, but I, I was like, man, boy, if I had it, I would want to wear that or I always had like taste and I always had desire, right? So I came up with this concept and this was my original logo of like this kind of like emoji head with these hair bandages and this tongue stick and I'm making a silly face. And there's a representation of like the the showing his mental health instead of hiding it by wearing the head bandages, uh, but still keeping a silly face to let you to remind you that no matter what you go through in life, you can still find joy. And so the idea, this is probably like 2016. The idea was always to, uh, you know, do something for mental health because I always wanted to be, an, you know, I consider myself an advocate for it. And uh, the hard part was like. How do, how now how the fuck do I create a clothing brand right? And I had went uh, before I had this idea. I had had this these shirts. I had this idea like for positive tees, and it was going to be like this rendition of a of a smiley face and a peace sign. And I was going to kind of reinvent it, which is kind of a dumb idea because you don't don't change what's already working, right? It's going to be hard to adjust people's mind around what something is. And uh, not saying that it couldn't have worked, but it would have been very challenging. Um, and when I went to there's, there's there's a studio that graphic designers and they were they can do printing and stuff like that. When they gave me a quote on just the digitization of this thing, this before I knew about Fiverr or anything like that, they were trying to charge me a hundred dollars to digitize the sketch I made. And um, I'm like hell no. At the time, I ain't got no money. I'm like young. I'm like hell no. Every tweak them, boy. Whoa, plant. Let's scratch that idea. And move on. Um, but when they sent me the mock up, like the draft with the watermark on it, I was like, mm, this ain't it. Came with the idea, drew it in my notebook, and I just left it there. So I'm rapping, rapping, rapping. I do show, I, I do a couple shows, perform in Miami, do different things like that, do music videos. Uh, you know, and this is after I left Iowa. I got off probation early, <clears throat> good behavior, paid all my fees, da 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 da. Moved back to Pennsylvania because my mom got sick and she had got heart surgery. And, um, you know, so I moved back to Pennsylvania. Sucks, small town, um, but a lot of good came with this. You know, decided that like, man, I wasn't willing to make the changes that I and the sacrifices that I had to to be a rapper. You know, not that I wasn't good at it. I just didn't want to live that lifestyle. You know, ultimately, I was just trying to find a way to get out of poverty, and I was trying to assess the different skills that I had, the different gifts that I had that I can use to make that happen. You know, so <clears throat> once I kind of realized that, like, man, you know what, I don't want to be a rapper. I just like making music, you know, and then I'm like plan B, you know, now we off to, well, this is really like plan C now because it's football uh, and I was going to go to school for psychology, then it became music and now it's like, okay, boom, clothing. And <clears throat> at the time I was going to start with a partner and um, it just didn't kind of work, you know, I'm not going to say because them or because me, it just, you know, if anything, I'll probably say because me, you know, and um but also, I probably it probably would have never started anyway, too, you know. But um, I was in 2020, pandemic started, and I had this idea, and I was doing YouTube videos already for like three years. And um, before that, actually, no, Plan C, I was going to become a life coach. I got certified as a life coach. I took this training from this one coach about how to gain presence and uh, authority online and build your um, create your offer and build your website and all these things. And it was a beta group and um, it was like five hundred dollars and I invested in it and I got a lot of information and insight from that, you know, and um, learn how to like really like coach. Got certified in, 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 uh, in life coaching, but it's life coaching, just a broad term. It's really like whatever your like niche is, you know what I mean? And I wanted to help people through the process that I had went through. Just for me, it took probation. It took isolation. It took going through all these things, starting to read, meditate, find yourself, figure out who you are. I wanted to take people through that process. You know, and I and I still desire to do that, help people gain their control back of their life and understand that you're a main character and that you're, you know, 
you matter and you are here for a reason and you're a winner too, no matter what circumstances you're in. And um, and one day during the end of the course, she gives an evaluation and she tells me, it never, you never really talk about how excited you are for coaching. Everybody else keeps talking about how excited they are to get the first client and things like that, but you never say that. You know, I don't, and she tells me, I don't know if it's like, if coaching is what you really want to do. And um, simultaneously, I was streaming on Twitch while I was in college too. So I wanted to be a content creator as well. So I was making a lot of YouTube videos about mental health and I was doing like mental health and personal development. So a lot of videos about that, like weekly, daily. I was grinding. And some of you guys probably was there for that. And um, then I got to this coaching thing and I wanted to start pivoting. And it was super challenging because now it's like kind of gets boring, like just making this super niche content that wasn't going anywhere. And it's super challenging. Right. And I was young, too. So I wanted stuff fast. And this was a grind, you know, and I'm like, man, I need to make money now. But I'm broke. And um, so I'm like, OK, boom. She, she talking about I don't know if coaching is the thing. I think it's something that you could do, but I don't think that's the main thing you want to do. Contemplated that for a while, fuck me up. I'm like, man, I think she's trying to tell me I suck. <laughs> mm. So I'm like, boom, got this idea. Now, this may be a hard headed too, because God Ben gave me the idea. God Ben blessed me with the idea. I just didn't execute on it because all these excuses of, I don't know how I'm going to do this, how I'm going to do this, you know, da 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 da. So I'm like, let's do this, right? At the time, Justin Phillips was doing like this last. I'm YouTubing and watching a bunch of videos. Justin Phillips is doing the videos about um, last e-commerce book you ever need. Got that, read that, but it, it wasn't the thing that made me jump. Um, and I'm watching other people too, you know what I mean? And then I started through that rabbit hole, stumbling across Word and Visions videos. And they got so much content at this time, man. This was like 2020. Nah, wait. Mm. This was like beginning of 2022. So 2020, I, w I started the brand, but I was doing uh, print on demand. And I was doing YouTube videos. Like I was trying to put content first and like a brand as um, as merch. So I was doing drops. I mean, I was doing like print on demand. But then I realized that you couldn't make no money. People would buy stuff from me and I would make like $5, $2. You know what I mean? Because they're printing it up. They're shipping it. They're doing everything. And they're just giving you just a, almost like a royalty, like, you know? Just because it's your idea and your sale, or whatever. When he wasn't making no money off of it, so I just stopped doing that. You know, I built the website, built the shop website, linked it to uh, Printful and all that stuff like that. And I was like, "Yo, this you're not making no money off of this." Then people would have pop ups in my area, and I didn't feel like a real brand, a real clothing brand, because I couldn't go to pop ups because I didn't hold any inventory. You know what I mean? And I didn't have no money, so I couldn't just buy a bunch of um, the print on demand stuff as samples because they really only give you a couple of samples. So I'm like, man, I have to, I have to like lower my prices on these items, buy them from myself, and then sell them high. And I ain't had the money to do that. You know what I mean? So I was like, this is a dumb business model. Like, it's not gonna work. And um, so um, I was off that for a while, just doing content. What fuck the clothes? Let's just get back to the content. And then 2022. I have just finished college um, and no, uh, 2020, I finished college, got a job at the bank and I was just working my job and I really wasn't doing content for real. I really wasn't streaming, none of that. I was just working at the bank two years. I got three promotions, all that stuff like that. And um, getting tired of that stuff, man. Cause I'm like, man, I could do so much more. I'm tired of waiting for somebody to give me a promotion or somebody to quit or somebody to be fired or somebody else to get promoted so I can move up. And, um, and and it's like, no one's ever going to hire you to be the CEO of their company without track record. So it's like, I'm not going to, how I'm going to work my way up to just run the whole company. It's not going to happen. And if it does, I'm going to be like 50, you know? And the current CEO at the bank was like a young guy. He probably had to be like early 40s or something like that, you know? So I'm like, not going to happen. I'm going to have to pivot to another industry or another, another uh, to a competitor. So, um... I got that ebook from Justin Phillips. I also got an ebook from Hustle Ninja. And, um, you know, but when I started watching World and Vision YouTube videos, it really like expanded my mind on like so much stuff because I already had a why mental health awareness, personal development. And, and originally, my, my the slogan was to make, um, to, uh, make positivity and self love contagious. And I took out the positivity and just said, make self love contagious because it's smoother. 
and I'd ha and at first it was Contagious Collection, and then um, watching Word of Vision videos, boom, 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 boom. They had had a master class with James Hill in March. Now I don't even got no product at this time. I don't got nothing. And um, no, actually, I think I had ordered some stuff and I was getting it printed because they did this in like early April, end of March or something like that, you know. And um, and uh, no, actually, no, nah, I'm lying. Um, I was watching their videos and they was and they had um, I was watching their videos and I had launched my brand at a pop up shop. I'm watching their videos. I know you had to do pop up shops to really get your brand out there. So I launched my brand at a pop-up shop. I made like $400 at this pop-up shop. I was selling my shirts for $30. I was getting like next level uh, t-shirts and stuff like that. And um, <laughs> my shirts was like, <laughs> my shirts were like $10. <laughs> my shirts were like $10 a pop, man. I probably had 30 shirts and I had like uh, 30 shorts, right? I don't know why I did this. I had all black and I was like, this is stupid. If I can go back, I would do it totally different. And um, but this is what happened, you know? So um and I'm getting all type of stuff too. I'm getting like business cards, uh, vertical, so I can use them as hang tags and popping them into the shirt. So when I got shirts from our printer, I would fold them up. I would, I would, um, I would look over them, lint roll them, <laughs> pop the hang tag in there, fold them up, put them in a poly bag, put a side sticker on it. I realized that was dumb because when you go to pop up shop, people want to look at the shirt, see what, see how the size look, hold it up to themselves. You got to take out the bag, put it back in the bag, and all that stuff. It was just stupid. And um, hang tags might be cool to do again, but it's going to be very challenging to scale when you got thousands of shirts and you try to pop hang tags on them. Like, man, you're going to have to pay somebody just to do that. You don't really got to do it. Nobody care, you know? So it's like, boom, whatever. I did the pop-up shop, made $400. And then that week, I was still getting a little bit of motion after that. So I made like $1,000 the first week. And I was like, yo, I am on to something. Like, we're going to go crazy. Like, we're going to go crazy. And um and then I had did, uh, I took that money, boom. I had a couple shorts left. Um, pretty much all the black shorts is about gone. So I, I restocked on the black shirts. Uh, I got like 25, I got like 25 more or whatever. And then I got some blue ones. Did the blue ones, boom. Matter of fact, I got black, blue. And then I think I got, uh, I got mauve shirts too. Oh my God. People was going crazy over the mauve. And mind you, I made the first design and all that. Design was dookie. Design was dookie. People was buying it because of my mission, because of my vision, right? Because the story behind it. That's why they were buying it. That's why they were supporting it. And um, I was good at articulating it, right? I didn't really know how to sell for it. I was still getting popped up at the pop-up shop um, and all this type of stuff. But I was making like content and I was, I was trying to tell the story. And it was kind of conveying on a smaller level, right? But um, yeah, I was able to do that. Did the pop-up shop, um, got the first week, boom, got some new colors out. They would kind of sell, but then it would kind of move slow. And I was trying to go to every pop-up shop I possibly could. Then uh, Word and Vision did a um, master class with James Hill, uh, you know, Black Millionaires. At this thing, I'm telling them, man, I just launched my brand, watching all y'all videos. I got all y'all ebooks, and um, I launched my brand at a pop-up. And I made $1,000 the first week. And they're like, oh, congrats, congrats, congrats. And then they're like, did you get data? And I was like, get data? What do you mean? And um, I didn't have a POS. I wasn't getting data. And I still didn't have a POS after these at the next pop-ups. But I took a little clipboard and I had people write down their phone, their name, last name, email, phone number. Then I had to go back and enter this data in. But I couldn't read everybody handwriting. So some of the stuff is just, you're just still losing data. So the best way would just be to like, had the POS, take their transaction, get their phone number, enter it in, whatever, right? So there's different ways to do that. If you got to, you can have them write it down just to not miss it, but it's not efficient, you know? Um, so I was doing that for like a couple pop-up shops. Then um, I'm doing every pop-up shop I can. Sometimes I couldn't go because I had work and I just hated that because I'm like, man, if I go, it's going to sell. And I just was missing out. So then uh, we had the opportunity to do another master class. I got into this. I met my boy Jotan and this Joan, uh, and I started kind of building a network of people that like I like look up to, mutual respect, and uh, you know, kind of build off of that. And um, met like Gary around this time. Was getting the conversations with him because I saw him on the Word of Vision podcast. And um, yeah, so I got this three day master class. The master class that they still do. I was the one. I was the. I was in the first group of the three day master class. And um, 
you know, uh, and they had a lot of gems on there. Uh, open the kiosk, do 10K, run Facebook ads, find a winning design. And at the time, I still didn't know how to find a winning design. And I remember asking them in the VIP. Uh, it was a three-day math class, three-day VIP. I was in the VIP. And I remember asking them, like, you know, man, should I test a new design out? You know, people are liking it. And they like, you know, and at the time, I'm, I'm wearing my shirt in the master class. I know they see it. They're probably like, man, that shit dookie. What? That shit dookie. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it was selling to me. And I'm like, man, I'm making the most money ever. So I'm like, I don't want to change it, you know. But it's like, nah, this ain't it. It's selling because your story. It wasn't selling because of the design. And um, so I, I learned a lot from that master class, too. And it started to open my mind to different possibilities. So. I'm still doing pop-ups. I'm still trying to sell online. I'm, I'm getting data now, right? And I'm sending out, learning these texts and emails. And, and like, I'm trying to test ads, but I was sucking at it too from that masterclass. I still sucked at it. I wasn't really getting sales. So they started. I'm still watching their YouTube videos and learning. I'm still working my full-time job. Uh, they announced this inner, this private Facebook group for brand owners. So I'm like, I'm in there. I'm, I'm doing whatever they, you know, I'm in anything they do. And, um, in the circle, in that Facebook group, they talk about launching a circle. And I remember talking to like Gary on the phone, like, man, what you think it's gonna be? What you think the offer gonna be? How much you think it's gonna cost? We thinking like, man, they know we broke brand owners. They might say like a thousand dollars max, right? Nah, man. I get on the call. I'm like one of the first calls. I'm, I'm Marlon call me. I'm on my like break. I take a little break at work so I can talk on the phone. And uh, he like, you know. Yeah, I like your mission. I can tell you're good at articulating it. You know, people need that. You know, da 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 da. Or it's something you want to do full time, or do you want to work a job? Or da 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 da. And I'm like, you know, answering all the right questions. And then they're like, you know, it's gonna be three bands. I'm like, oh my god, I don't have three bands. And he's like, well, it was easy to do a payment plan. Now, I'm just like, yeah, you know, like, well, at this time, I'm thinking like, you know, I should have some money coming in. You know, I might be able to do this. I, I was working, making decent money at my job, you know, and, um, you know, so I'm like, boom, okay, worst case, worst, I'm going to do what I'm going to do because I didn't have the money. I had bills to pay. And if I pay for this, I was going to be, I was going to put me back on my bills. Right. But I knew this was a one to do long term. So it's like, like, fuck it. Sometimes you got to take that risk and bet on yourself. Right. So I had got paid that Friday and I had probably made like. Uh, probably like thirteen hundred dollars and something like that. that was nothing crazy, and uh, so, and I had to pay nine ninety seven for the first payment. I paid that, and I'm like, and at the same time, I found out that I was the winner for their like, I don't even know how many subscribers, like forty k subscribers, and I and I got um a free hundred shirts from them. Now I I didn't get these shirts like right then and there, and the circle didn't start right then and there. It started in January. And I got my shirts a little after because I'm, they've super, super busy. So it's like they ended up sending the shirts to my printer. My printer printed them for free for me because I was hoping to redo her website and set up some other things, too. So that's been a good relationship with my printer. And my, my printer played a huge role in a lot of this, too. Like, you know, shout out to shout out to Miss Lori, too. She played a huge role in me being able to grow and, and helping me get to this point. I remember talking to her about the circle. Like, man, they're talking about this. Like, should I invest in it? And she's like... Hey, I paid five thousand dollars to at a pitch thing, you know, da 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 da. So it's like, yeah, it seems like everybody who's seeing success pay money for coaching at some point, you know. So I'm like, let's do it. Circle start January. They give us these progress reports, flying flaming my business. So I'm like, damn, you know what? I need to. Essentially, I needed a new logo. I needed to drop the collection off of my brand name, and I needed uh, a new design. You know, I needed a new brand identity. Um, and because a lot of the stuff I had was very like on some local shit. So I needed a new brand identity. So I, I came up with a new logo. I'm sending it to Nick and Marlon, getting their feedback, sending it to other people I'm meeting in the circle, getting their feedback. And, they, and then we found one. Boom. This is it. I get some designs made. I'm looking through the design, I'm sending them through and they like, boom, this is it. Everybody's just saying this is it. I'm getting feedback from people in on my social media. Now, this is like after month one, almost like we get through January in the circle. And all I'm really doing is like figuring out how to fuck rebranding my shit, you know? And um, I'm like, I am did everything wrong. <laughs> I did everything wrong. I got to rebuild, rebuild my business and my brand identity. And um, we're going, I went through on Instagram, found some people that could do designs, found some good designs. 
And then I'm like, I like these ones. And then I, I, I removed some stuff from, from the original brand identity and, and upgraded a lot of things and made it more polished. And um, then I dropped the new design. And at this time I had old stuff too that was sitting. So I'm sending out like uh, free shirts and I had like all these white shirts that was like, I just made them free on my website. And I had black shirts that I just made like $4.99. So people were just buying it out, buying it out. I need to get all this inventory gone so I can get the new stuff in. Cause I never want to look at this old stuff again because my progress report, they done fried my brand. My, my design is horrible. <laughs> oh man. So, um, I test the new drop, man. And at, the at this time, I would make like, depending on how many pop-ups I had, because at this time, the, my biggest month was probably like 3K, 3,500 or something like that. And that was in like the June, we had Juneteenth, and all these different events going on. So I was going crazy, I was hustling. And um, you know, so at this time, my biggest month was like 3,500, but on a normal, I will probably make it like 400 to like $1,200. So. At this point, I'm getting my normal run of product. I'm like, I'm going to put invest in this. I'm going to get this much product. And I have got some hoodies. I got three different color hoodies. I got a, um, a black and off-white with off-white print, a, a royal blue and gray print, and a maroon and a mauve print. Posted this online, took some photos. People was hype about it. New design, new brand identity. I was talking about changing my name, changing my logo, all that. People had seen the change in the process. And then when I posted these things, bro, when I tell you these hoodies sold out in a weekend, you know, and I made about like $1,200, $1,300. I had made what I was normally making in a month in a weekend, bro. And this one, I knew that this was a winning product and, and, and I need to get this in front of more people. Simultaneously, this is like February. Malik had just opened up his kiosk. Malik Lost Hearts had just opened up his kiosk. Little nigga going crazy, man. He go, he's running it up. And um, I'm like, yo, I'm working this job. This cat at the kiosk talking about man, 800 today. I'm like, oh my God, I ain't make 800 of my job. You feel me? And I'm like, man. And it's funny because I'm thinking like, there's a, there's like probably about 10 of us in the initial inner circle group. And it had to be Malik to do this because it would have hit so different. It would feel somebody else, somebody older. Even like, well, you're, you know, oh, you're older and you got more experience. If it was somebody else who has some, you know, but Malik was the youngest and it hit different because he was the youngest. And, you know, of course, he kind of had less sacrifice as far as free time and like bills. But as far as like just kicking down the dough, it hit different when it was the youngest person. So like me, I'm, I'm, I believe in, you know what I mean? So I'm like, I'm, I'm easily motivated, you know? So I'm like, dang, you know what? I'm about to put my two weeks notice in. I'm about to open the kiosk. I'm going to text Marlon like, man, I'm about to quit my job. Look at my job. I just I got new design. I just rebranded my brand. I'm at thousand dollars in a weekend. If I could double down on this, I'm gonna go crazy. He like you know stack up the bread. And I kind of told y'all about this in a little bit. You know I'm like man, we ain't got time for that. I'm about to go in. You feel me? Like all right, you know all right, big dog. All right, boss. So um, I set everything. I get the kiosk, pay for the kiosk, put my two weeks notice in, like the fifteenth of February. I was supposed to be done January, March first. Like a little before March 1st, open the kiosk. They were trying to get me to stay till March 3rd. I was never going to do that. So happened that my granddad had passed away right around, right at this time. So I'm like, I'm going to do it. Funeral. So I'm missing work from that to kind of grieve. And then by the time that was over, I'm like, man, I ain't going back. I ain't going back. I'm about to prepare for this. I'm about to prepare for this. Jumped in that kiosk. 14K first month, man. Learning how to sell, just getting in there, diving in there, 14K first month. And um, just telling my story, selling my story, man. Just telling people about my story. Hey, how you doing really fast? Can I tell you about my brand? Yeah, what's up? What's up? Yeah, what's your name? My name is Kieran. This my brand. It's called Contagious. It's about making self-love contagious. We're just trying to raise awareness for mental health, suicide prevention. Man, as you know, right now, suicide is the 10th leading cause of death for Americans. But that's why every month we donate to a new organization for mental health research. And we host a self-love club. You know, it's just a support group. It's free. It's just, you know, support group for those struggling. We get snacks for them, refreshments. Just a safe place to make event. But what do you think about the brand? You know? Oh, I like it, man. That's so dope, man. Like, people doing it. I'm happy somebody talking about it. Best part, though, it's super, super affordable. Right now, you can get this for that, or you can get this for that. Damn me. You know, what size you wear? And then they copy. Boom, 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 boom. Run it up. And um, 
I've been in the inner circle since January and I've been in my kiosk since March. And now I'm on track of like doing hundred K this year, man. In my second year. Right. And it really the first year wasn't in a full year. I started in April, April 30th, went through the rest of the year. So right before our one year anniversary, I jumped in the kiosk, had my biggest month. And then, you know, now the, from there, I kind of told you on a separate video what happened through that whole process from then to now. But that's the whole process of how I started my brand, and how I got to where I am and the, the decisions I made and the steps I took, you know. So, guys, it's very possible. It's very possible. One of the biggest things I would say is get a coach, learn from a coach, you know, reach out to World Envision. You can get in there. You can hit me up to get in there. But only people that are serious, if you can't afford that, I would say get in, get in the, the um, their master class. And then if you get in the master class, bro, you can literally hit me up to, to, for coaching. Right. I can jump on a call with you, run you through a lot of stuff. Once you once you're done with me, then I can help you get in the inner circle to really turn up 10 times that. Right. Because I can only take you so far because I can't take you past where I'm at. But that's why I have a coach so I can keep learning and growing. But I can help you get really, really close to where I'm at. And if not past me, you know, and then get you in the inner circle so that you can focus on doing 100 K in a month, 400 K in a month. That's what these type of guys are doing. These guys are approaching a million dollar months. Right. That's they go. You know what I mean? So it's like it's so much further. But right now, I know I'm at right now in my business where some people would dream to be at, might not never see. So I want to help people jump through that because that's what helped me. Somebody put me in position. I took the risk. Yeah, I bet on myself, but somebody helped me get in position to do that with my business. But I only want to work with serious people. I only want to work with people who are serious about this. I don't want to waste my time. And yes, it's going to cost money because if you don't, pay you don't pay attention if you don't pay you don't you're not going to put in the work you know what i mean so you got to pay for it guys don't think things are free if you want some people who want stuff free want stuff easy and that's not how life is so you're going to fall short so you know invest in yourself you're not paying me you're paying to invest in your dream so that you can hold yourself accountable because when you put money behind things you're more willing to take it more serious and go harder right and I'm not saying it's not, it's going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. If entrepreneurship and building a six figure business was easy, everybody would do it, but it's not. That's why everybody don't do it. But if you believe that you can reach out to me, hit me up, drop a comment. You can text my phone. If you're ready, if you're serious and you are, you know, you want to take that step, text me personally, 724-734-9945. Let's see where you at. Let's see what's the best move for you. Let's turn you up. Right. You can also check the link in the description. I got some, um, ebooks and exclusive content that you can get at a super super affordable price that can really turn you up that really can elevate your brand and do times five times ten whatever you're doing right now that love that content alone if you want to get coaching or if you want to get into the you know uh word and measures master class or if you're ready to just jump in the inner circle let me know because i can still help you do those things as well but i'm not gonna make this too much longer guys thank you guys i love you take care of yourself god bless you till next time peace